Hello and welcome to the ACP Automation channel. In this video I'd like to talk about and give an example of how to exchange data between a Siemens CP1430 card or H1 network card as it was known and a computer using Ethernet. This will hopefully form the start of a series of videos on how to incorporate Siemens S5 as part of an IoT slash Industry 4 network. The CP1430 card is of compact design, so it can be fitted into a Siemens S5115U using an adapter case, a 135U or a 155U PLC. As can be seen here, it is installed in a Siemens S5135U PLC in slot 9. In this particular rack, the card can be seated in any of the first 9 slots only. This slot on the front of the card is for a flash memory module. The memory module will hold the parameters for the card in the case of a power failure and a flat battery. Uh, this 15 pin port here is marked as PROG. This is for the programmer to connect to for parameterization. Uh, here we have another 15 pin port. Uh, this 15 pin port is marked as AUI slash TP. This is where the card would connect to the H1 network. Uh, there are four LEDs on the front of the card. Uh, this is the run and this is the stop LED, this is the fault LED and this LED indicates that the 15 volts is OK. Uh, this is the mode switch, uh, this will put the card into stop to allow parameters to be changed. So, allow me to power the PLC on and we will take a look at the LEDs and what they mean. We'll just wait for the PLC to boot up. So with the CPU booted up and the powered on, um, we can now see that the 15 volt uh, LED indicators on to show that the 15 volt is OK. Also the run and stop LEDs are on. Uh, you will also notice that the fault LED has e extinguished. Uh, now as this is a new installation, both the run and stop LED will remain illuminated. Uh, this indicates that the synchronization will need to be carried out. Um, this means that the card now needs to be synchronized to the CPU. To configure the card you will need a 6ES5734 programming lead. Uh, this is the same one as used for programming the CPU. You will also need Sinec NCM installed on the same PC as the Step 5 programming package. So let me just select the configuration package. And as can be seen here, I am using version 5.01. From here, you can set the basic installation parameters. So, inside CP init, I have set up the base SSNR as 4. Uh, this is so that the data handling blocks can communicate with the CP card. Inside the TCP init, I have set an IP address up as 192.168.0.0.1.100 and a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 Inside the connections I've set up a send and a receive job uh, here is the send job and here is the receive job uh, from CP functions you can start and stop the process let's go start click on start it'll send a start packet to the card and the card should go into run. In the PLC I have set up a data block DB20 and entered some text which I want to send out to my computer. Also in the data block DW30 and DW31 are two time values which I want to dynamically change from the computer. I've set the PC's IP address as 192.168.1.110 and connected a cable between the CP card and the PC directly. I've started the Hercules software which allows me to start a TCP server listening on port 1001. Let me start the server listening and hopefully the PLC will connect. 
As can be seen, the PLC has connected and the text from DB20 is now being transmitted out and displayed in the received data window. OK, so now we can have a go at changing the times within Data Word 30 and Data Word 31. When we looked at the times in DB20, they were set as 3.2, which is 3 seconds. The data words are used as the time base for T2 and T3 in my program, which is flip-flopping an output, which in turn is controlling a relay, which you can hear clicking away. So, as I change the time value, we should hear the relay cycling at a different speed. I am setting the value of the time using hex format. The last tetrad, um, which bits 12 to 15, are the time base, and as can be seen, this is set to 2, which equals seconds. The time is entered in BCD format, meaning the maximum value which can be set is 999. So let me change the time to 1 second. I will send this out twice as the job is expecting two words. So, we can now see that the time value has changed and we can hear the relay clicking faster. If I now change the time base to 1, this will give us a time base of 0.1 seconds and if I enter 5 as the time value, this should give us a timer duration of 500 milliseconds. And as we can hear, the relay is clicking faster still. So, this is now the end of my video. I hope you have enjoyed it and please remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.